Hey everyone, this is an individual here with another video. Um, now, I've taken a little break, I've detoxified, but that has inevitably given spark to more ideas for more huge, huge projects. And even more ambitious than the ones that I just that than the one that I just finished. And so it's like, bro, no way. Please, cut me a break, brain. What do you want from me, honestly? So, anyways, I was um scrolling uh, through my YouTube notifications yesterday. And I came across some guy named Sven, I think was his name. Yeah, shout out to that guy. And I had left a comment on my geothermal power plant video saying that it no longer worked and was outdated. Oh man. <laughs> G great thing to wake up to, I know. For me it's like 9am, but... I don't know if you guys maybe like 10 p.m. or something. So today we're going to be updating that design. Except today we're not going to be using geothermal energy anymore. Although I guess I could mm, maybe make another design. Oh no, the idea is. Oh well. Today we'll be making another completely renewable. Um, way of generating energy in HBM's nuclear tech mod, especially for early game. This method is uh, relatively cheap. It is cheaper than um, nuclear reactors. It is cheaper than, for example, the Xernox or the RBMK. And although it won't really get you much done if you uh, don't if you don't have some sort of other um, energy source, it is a good um, kind of grid to fall back on in case you need it. Like an emergency grid, you know what I mean? So today we're going to be harvesting desert energy. Yes, I still remember that... Hold on for a second. Let me just make a reference that literally no one knows about. I still remember desert energy from Call of Duty Ghosts, even though I never played it. So I decided that we could go out into the desert. It never gets cloudy, it never rains, only when the sun goes down, and it looks like the sun isn't moving, so we'll be a perfect spot to build our solar tower. So, as you can see, I've marked the center here with um, particle accelerator planing. Grab some sort of scaffolding block, and go up by... Go up by, by two, base like this, and place this solar tower here. Now, how this thing works is basically we have these things called heliostat mirrors, which you can make with three aluminium plates, one steel beam, and three um, steel ingots, and it will give you three of these. And initially, I thought it was very expensive, but if you have... Um, a mine factory reloaded drill, which is the one that I, I'm kind of most going for since it's practically infinite, then uh, you'll have these resources no problem. You will need to grind for a little bit, but it won't be a big, big issue. So once you place down your solar tower, um, below it, I place this a little too low. Hold on. It's, yeah, it's, it's three blocks up. And then place your your solar tower. I don't know why in HBM we don't have photovoltaics yet, if you even know what that means. But I'm going to assume you do. So you're gonna set up some sort of water input. I'm just gonna have an infinite barrel. And so we're gonna set that to outport, so that our solar tower will now be filled with water. Water. Water water, whatever you want to call it. Now count, uh, hold on, there we go, now count two blocks out on each one of these and put some sort of um, marking on the outer one. I'm using particle accelerator, uh, 
to just put this. I don't even know what to call it anymore. Um, I'm using particle accelerator plating because it. Wait. No, it it is it's, it's three. It's three. Sorry. On the third block, you want to put um your um your markings. I'm using particle accelerator plating because it looks extremely good. Not that it's cheap, but I mean, well, it's it's kind of cheap. But for most people, it is not. I am thankfully not one of those people. Anyway, so just um yeah, finish dec um finish decorating your solar base. And you might have seen some people talk about the solar tower boiler before, but I really haven't seen that many, if any. So I decided to talk about it, and it was also because it was it was the only. Thing. It was the only one of our renewable power source that I thought of that didn't require any other sort of energy at all, like uh, heat exchangers or something. Because man, that stuff sucks. Anyways, now um, <laughs> quickly go back in time and mention that you want to dip. Uh, dig a three block deep, thirteen block, uh, thirteen by thirteen by three, um, sort of little hole, which is where you can have your solar tower. And now here, on these uh, spaces remaining, do not exceed this. You want to start placing your heliostat mirrors. Now you will need absolutely heaping amounts of these, so. Yes, do be extremely careful with your resources. You don't want to end up broke. So just um, put down all your heliostat mirrors. I will. Oh, oh, um, oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. In a minute. Okay, and now it is time to adjust them. The way you do this is just grab your mirror adjustment tool, which you can make with two aluminium ing and two iron ingots, arranged like that. Just right click your solar tower. And that will it will give you a message saying alignment position set. And now, just go around clicking on all of these mirrors. And as you can see, their orientation will automatically change. Hold on. <coughs> Jeez. Um, and their orientation will automatically change um, to be that of pointing towards the south, the solar tower. So, yeah, you're gonna need that. Because otherwise, it's not gonna boil any water. The reason it's called a solar tower boiler is um, because when we put water in it, um, that's kind of like a, a, have you heard of it? I think it's called a Fresno lens or something like that. It redirects sunlight towards the solar tower, which heats up the water and boils it, which turns into steam, which can be used to turn turbines. It basically works exactly the same as nuclear power, but a little bit different. Now go out, um, up here, and you want to place some more heliostat mirrors. Now I'm going to place two layers, but you can go really uh, as much as you want. In my testing, um, I managed to get about 80 kilo HEs per second, which is really, really, really good for early game. It will get you pretty much through the entire early game. Um, although, yeah, you will need to have quite the investment in, in heliostat mirrors, and, and you know what. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, do be careful with that. You don't want to, um, what do I call it? Like, <laughs> you don't, you don't want to think that this is better than a nuclear reactor. Like, let's be honest, even the most basic nuclear reactor is better than this. 
Even, even the big nuclear reactor, which I consider to be the worst and most inefficient, is better than this. So well, once you have finished your second layer of heliostat mirrors, just click on them again. Oh, by the way, uh, right click, not not left click, because if you left click, it's just gonna break them, so, yeah. Right click on all the mirrors until you can see that they are all pointing towards the solar tower. <clears throat> and this design is modifiable. You can dig a deeper hole and put more heliostat mirrors, or you can raise pillars here to add more mirrors. Um, <clears throat> it really just depends on the power output that you need. And these, like, uh, small, uh, like, white glow that you see, is the sun being redire uh, redirected towards the solar tower. So that's what the mirrors are about. <laughs> But, um, the relation is, is that, um, the more solar tower, um, sorry, the more heliostat mirrors you have, uh, pointing towards one solar tower, uh, the more energy output you'll get. Of course, provided you can, provided you can constantly feed, feed it with water. So on the top you want to take an output, and you can extend it over here, doesn't really matter. And now you're going to need some industrial turbines. I'm going to use just, well, uh, any turbines, really. I'm using industrial steam turbines. And now just link them up with the solar tower. And, well, here you want to have your electrical grid. So I'm going to just put a energy storage box so I can measure how much energy we're producing. And just identify these with steam, and you should see that the turbine starts spinning. Good. Now you will have to deal with the low pressure steam. Now, if you're in survival, um, uh, then the thing that would be smartest to do would be to cool it down in a cooling tower, and then redirect it all the way back towards the solar tower um, water input. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I had other plans, but you know what? Uh, I guess I guess this is my life now. So yeah, you will have to deal with low pressure steam. Then the low pressure steam flare and fire identify that with low pressure steam. As you can see, it'll start um, um, start taking out <laughs> um, low pressure steam. Now, let's just check on the energy output. Boom, 64 kilo HGs per second. So that is indeed, indeed very effective. I think we didn't get to 80 kilo HGs because on the testing I did it with three layers here. So if you add an extra layer of biggest time mirrors, you'll get 80 kilo HGs per second. So grab your, your water input. Um, well, your closed water loop no more. And, well, preferably, you would um, dig it from underneath, you know what I mean? And that is proving to be kind of difficult right now, so... Uh, two, three, three, four, three, four. One more. Don't worry, we're gonna repair this in a second. Uh, this to input and output and we can take the barrel out and as you can see it will, it will stay taut so yeah pretty simple in my opinion it is pretty cheap um, maybe aside from the heliostat mirrors the solar tower boiler isn't that expensive either you just need three big steel shells and two um, um, two black dies you can um, 
you can use coal uh, coal powder or something like that and four steel ingots and I'll give you the sort of tower boiler and although this may not be that useful in in mid to late game if you're in early game then it is a pretty efficient and good way to produce power just know just know that as soon as it turns into night energy production will stop See, no more energy coming through. And the reason for that should be pretty obvious, since there is no sunlight being redirected to there, there is no water being boiled and turned into turbines. If you are in another biome, if you couldn't uh, find a, a desert, and as you can see, it immediately goes back to producing once um, day rolls around, 64 kilo HGs. Um, if you aren't in a desert biome, uh, where it never gets cloudy, I think it even happens here. Hmm. Not apparently. But in, in other biomes, um, uh, when it, it gets cloudy, um, the solar tower does not work, so be careful about that. Or at least I think it doesn't work, because I've been my testing and it, it seems to not work, so... Yeah. Uh, okay, so it does work, but it is much less efficient. So if I change the water back to clear... This will be back at 64. There we go, perfect. So that's all there is to know about the solar tower, um, thank you so much for watching, uh, remember to like and subscribe if you found this tutorial useful, um, once again shout out to um, Sven in my comment section for pointing this out, dude I had no idea, like, I was totally disconnected from reality for a little bit, I had no idea that it didn't work anymore, thank you so much, you saved me the headache of, like, I don't know, doing it in a minute's notice or something. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for watching. Remember to leave a like and subscribe. This has been The Chosen Individual. And I'll see you next time. Peace out, gamers.